Hey adventurers, I'm in Costa Rica, how amazing. Did you know that Costa Rica has over 130 different species of frogs? In fact, look, I'm gonna show you one right now. Here, here, let's come up right here. Look at that, look, oh, it's running away. But that, those right there, those two things are strawberry poison dart frogs. Very, very cool. I mean, <laughs> I guess that's one of 130 to go. Anyway, once night comes, that's when there's really a lot of frogs out. So in just a moment, we're gonna let it get dark and I'm gonna show you all sorts of cool things that we're gonna find at night. And just like that, we're ready to go. Let's see what's out tonight. It's just incredible how much life there is out here after the sun goes down. Look, we are seeing crickets, we're seeing stick insects. We even saw a rhinoceros beetle, which is so incredibly cool. Now, I don't wanna talk about bugs for too much for two reasons. One, I don't know all that much about them. Um, but two, on a rainy night like this, we can see an incredible amount of amphibians. And in fact, I think we're gonna find a good number of frogs tonight. Here's our first one. This is a drab tree frog. They're generally pretty plain looking, ranging from gray to reddish brown, and they have these irregular dark markings on the back. They're members of the genus Smilisca, which means little knife in Greek, but they don't really give off a dangerous vibe. The unique thing about the frogs in this genus is that they have two vocal sacs side by side. This was the only drab tree frog we saw on our trip, probably because they actually breed in the dry months. But we did see another frog in the genus quite often, the mass tree frog. In fact, this was one of the most common frogs we saw. We even had a few with us at the swimming pool. The mass tree frog tends to be a bit more colorful with a mix of tans and greens with a dark brown eye mask. All right, check it out. This is one of the frogs I was hoping to find. This is a reticulated glass frog. And if we get up really close, you can see it has all of these little tiny markings on the back. <clears throat> that's its reticulated pattern. Now the cool thing is if we look up there, that's a bunch of tadpoles forming and it looks like there's another egg mass right near it. Very, very cool to see. And the cool thing about glass frogs is they are uh, partially translucent. And so here, let me, one second. If we shine the light from the other side, you can see, you can basically see through the frog and I like, kind of see into its organs a little bit. Really, really, really neat. Glass frogs are strictly arboreal and lay their eggs on the underside of leaves above fast moving streams. They sometimes can be confused with small tree frogs, but they have forward facing eyes. Let's take a quick look and compare it with the mass frog from earlier. The mass frog has eyes that are on a much greater angle to its body. Check out this little fella. This is a leaf litter toad. With its smooth skin, it looks very similar to some of the frogs we've seen, but those huge paratoid glands clearly mark it as a toad. But they're not the largest glands we've seen. Check out this giant toad. This is one of the easiest toads to identify out here. One, based off its huge size, and also its paratoid glands are triangular and really extend to the sides of the toad. Now this is exciting. I think I see a predator. This is a Costa Rican water snake. Now it's not probably eating too many of the frogs out here. It's probably hunting shrimp, but it is still pretty cool to see. And I just love how its skin it has this, such a glossy shine to it. It's really, really cool. Now this snake is non-venomous. And so you can see, I even have it in my hand here and was pretty pretty calm, uh, which was also excellent to sort of allow us to get a close-up look to it. Now at home, we often look for snakes on the ground, but when we're out here, it's a good idea to look up. Up above, we spot a yellow, blunt-headed tree snake looking for a tasty meal. These snakes have huge eyes in order to hunt their prey at night. In fact, their eyes are about 25% of their entire head. Nearby, we see a cloudy snail-eating snake. 
although I think it's getting a little nervous as it's coiling up into a very defensive position. Maybe it's time to move on to the next thing. Pretty soon we come across a clay colored rain frog. And although it's difficult to see here, its irises often remind people of a sunset. Next we found a Savage's thin toed frog. This is also known as the smoky jungle frog and it is easily the largest frog we saw out here. Here, just look at the size compared to my hand. Well, the night isn't quite over yet, as we just found this really cool egg sac. Now, this is probably belonging to one of the most beautiful frogs out here, the red-eyed leaf frog. And I have a feeling if we look just a little bit harder, we will find one very soon. And here it is. The creme de la creme of frogs out in Costa Rica, the red-eyed tree frog. Now, one of the cool things is that the ones on the Pacific coast and the ones on the Caribbean coast look a little different. And so this one has a lot of blue on the side. And that's a characteristic of the frogs that are more on the Caribbean side. As we return back to camp, we spot a kinkajou eating out of a chestnut-headed or a pendulous nest. And what a great way to end the night. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Greg Schechter, this is Schechter Natural History, and I'll see you in the field.